This is Musical Talk. Musical Talk. The UK's independent musical theatre podcast. Musical Musical Talk. Talk. The UK independent musical theatre podcast. Hello, Foss. Hello, Nick. Or should I at this time of year call you Saint Nick? Where are my presents? I've been described as being rather like Father Christmas because I have great presents. End of joke. <laughs> Moving on. Um, we are going to dedicate the show to my friend Matthew. Hello, Matthew, because we have a very good format today, <laughs> don't we? Write that down and look at it, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then think about it and complain about it on Twitter. It's the end of the year. It is Christmas time, you might have realised. And I am going to run through a list, because I've made a list. <laughs> Just a little list. What, what's, what show is that from? It's from the Mikado, okay. which is funny enough, there's a version of the Mikado currently on in London at the Playhouse Theatre under the arches. So if you want to check what I've said against actual performance, you may. Foss has seen it already? I haven't, actually. I only became aware of it yesterday. What, the Mikado? <laughs> the Mikado version in London. Oh, okay. But it looks rather good. It looks rather splendid from the photographs and the reviews. So Lovely. The format for today's show is that we are going to... Well, I'm going to be running through a list of shows that I've seen, the shows that I remember seeing this year, and I'm going to give myself, what should we say, two minutes on each show? Yes, I think two minutes will be a good digest for each yes. show. And it's going to be, what, a, a series of questions and answers? Well, just general uh, chit-chat about yes. it, what we think and what you think. What, what Highlights, you... thoughts and anything that comes into the little old bonds. If you've actually seen it, it would be a miracle for us, I think. Well, this will be interesting, actually, at that level, because you and I, I think our tastes are diverging in quite a long way. You head ever more into the spectacular as I head ever more into the esoteric old or small. Or dead. Um, I like to think that's almost a standard. So look out if you're a current songwriter and I like your work. You will be dead before the end of next year. <laughs> but it'd be very interesting to see where you and I do overlap and where we don't. I'm going to put two minutes on the clock now and I'm going to talk about Gypsy, which I Ooh. saw at the Chichester Festival Theatre. Um, highlight of my year, probably. Oh, really? One of the best shows I've seen? Yes, one of the best performances I've ever seen. And that was? That was Imelda Staunton. Oh, course, well. Doing her Mama Rose. Um, She's really taken the West End over in the last few years, hasn't she? Yeah. From Mrs Lovett to to Mama Rose, as you say, and Mm. um, all points north, you know, she's really... Well, she's always been a remarkable actress, a remarkable comic, actually. She has real talent in that sphere. And now, I mean, she's always had a sort of musical strain to her career, but I think it's really pleasing that she's finally sort of becoming one of the greats of the West End. And she's that rare, an an elderly woman playing roles, because there aren't many great old female I think we should be clarified we're we're talking older middle age rather than old aren't we yes Um, because you've got your Anne Emery's and they're kind of doing all the grandma roles they are indeed bless her we love Anne Emery um, but there's no one really you've got the hell of a lot of younger performances but there's no one in that middle ground to take on roles such as British performers I mean the Americans it's her and Rosemary Ash essentially isn't it and uh, the Americans have the patties and they have the Victorias and all that stuff but we don't really have that great but we have Imelda Staunton and we have yeah. we bloody have her in space and, and so. she's ours absolutely yes um, are you going to see Gypsy when it comes to the Savoy Theatre I would very much like to see Gypsy because it's one of those shows I've always enjoyed um, I enjoyed I even enjoyed the film. I saw the film when I was a boy. Which version? The Rosalind Russell. Okay. Uh, Tim Sayward will hear nothing said against the Bette Midler version, which Ooh. he thinks is fantastic. We've got a and lovely new album out at the moment, Bette Midler, if you want to do if you're a fan of 60s rock and roll music, Thos. Just look at those words for a minute and tell me what you think. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I do think Gypsy is a masterpiece. I think it's a yes. masterpiece. It's a very, very well-structured book piece. Um, thing that what didn't impress me much in that show, sadly, is the overture. Oh really? Um, oh, the so we're going to finish with the overture. Go well, on. <laughs> there was no it's that radicals like merrily roll along. There was no timpani roll in the beginning, and I thought, oh, that's that's a shame. It's just a little cymbal roll, unless a timpanist was late or something. Um, and they so just, is this because they've rewritten the uh, uh, overture? They or is it be- cut the overture. Oh, did they now? Yes, but I'm, I'm sure some various estate had a lot to say about that. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm glad it stayed in because you know it's it is the star of that show. Other than Imelda Staunton, when you think of Gypsy, you think of that overture. Suddenly, that's where you're. I'm completely different to you. I don't do that at all. Okay. It's the score I think of. But well, we need to move on. We've had our two minutes. You have no soul. We're going to talk about Assassins next. The new Assassins. The new Assassins uh, currently playing at the Menier Chocolate Factory. Very, very, very dark, brooding 
piece. Are, are you interested in it? First? I'm certainly interested in it. I've always quite liked Assassins. I've, I'm on record as saying I think it's the last of the great Son times. Mm, I think it's his most tuneful ever. Um, sometimes I. Sometimes. <laughs> I. Mm, I tell you what I'm interested in. Catherine Tate is in it, and it's partly being sold on her name, oddly, but it's not. Um, a lead woman piece it doesn't as far as I'm concerned it's, no a good, in it. it's an ensemble musical absolutely yes. in its truest possible sense so I'm I'm wondering if that's going to overbalance it have you actually seen it yes I have oh, of course that's why we're reviewing it yes. so, so tell me um, how does she fit in and do you think there is a disparity between the way it's being advertised and the show itself well, she's obviously, you know, huge national draw, big TV show. Mm. She's a household name in this yeah, country. She's a very, very good comic actress. She and that's is. what she does in this. She doesn't have a song. She sings a bit in the gun song. Yeah. She does a very, very good American accent. As I said in my review, the woman next to me was American and she was absolutely fooled by it. Was she now? Yes. Um, and she, she, you know, she gets lots of laughs and she she comes on and does the piece. Though, is she, is she the woman who's in, in love with... Um Charles Manson. Which, which which assassin is she? You see, this is the problem I have with the piece. There's so many different... You have to know your stuff before you go in because there's so many different stories going on. It's all a bit blending into one. Do you know, that makes it... That's a, I've, I've never got to press start, so as a treat, I'm going to press start and then we're going to talk about assassins a bit longer. This is the, the extended assassins. Yes. You make a very good point there. Now, I got to know Assassins first because I had the CD mm-hmm. when it came out in 1991. Um, and as a result, I'd read all the sleeve notes, as I always assiduously do. And then um, they in themselves were enough to explain to me, as a British person, about um, some of the assassination attempts, which we in Britain just aren't aware of. You know, we are all we aware think of, of the ones. We think of Lincoln and we yeah. think of Kennedy. And those of us who are old enough will remember the attempt on Ronald Reagan. To be honest, you know, I've never heard of Joel Gosh, working man who was born in the middle of Michigan, as we know. Michigan. <laughs> yeah, well, of course. Um, and this is a good example of. Uh, I'm going to jump ships now and talk about a different thing. This is uh, one of the musicals where actually I think you can see the occasional crack in sometimes lyrics. Uh, that's a good example of an interesting yeah, bit of scan. doing it on purpose because well, it was the period or something like that. No, I don't think that's true because there's also one of his particular um, vocal mannerisms which he um, sometimes puts in. He uses the word wood as a gap filler. So, um, and the judge said wood he... Wood is a very good gap filler. Yeah, but it isn't. It's not. W O O D. Yeah, but it's not good English in the sense that no one would say the judge said he would hang mm. or something like. I can't remember the exact line, but it was. It, but it's maybe of, the judge did say that. It's to, it's to make the scanning work. It's something he uses in Evening Primrose as well. It's it's a, it's a, it's one of his particular ticks. Anyway, what did you think? I I, I thought it, it's his most tuneful score. I mean, the fact that he does eighties pop ballad. It's, it, it's the most surprising Sondheim score because apart from something has broke. Yeah. Um, it doesn't sound like some time at all, which is very, oh, very Oh, do you good. not think so? No. Oh, I do. Lyrically it might, but certainly not musically. It's a surprise that he goes into country and western and gospel and all this kind of other stuff that we'd never really heard from him before. Yes, but he is the master of the pastiche as, amongst, I mean, as much as doing original stuff. I mean, oh, here we are, two ah. minutes up. Folly shows he can do pastiche, and I think he's just doing it again. That's one style. That's jazz and old Broadway, which yeah. you'd expect from a Broadway composer, but having him do an 80s cheesy pop ballad doesn't really done many of those. Uh, if I don't mean to draw your attention, but there's many a cheesy 80s pop ballad in musical theatre. But so. not by him. That's fair. Do you see what I mean? Time's up. Yeah, move on. <laughs> um, I haven't seen this, but I, I, was, not, I, I was asking around our uh, co-presenters and, and friends, and uh, we asked dear Andrew Corcoran what his highlight was. Oh, yes. And we all love Corker. He said, can I nominate one of my own shows? And I went, well, certainly. And he said, Carousel. <gasps> Has he done Carousel? He did Carousel oh, with the Arcola. I'll be forced to um, excuse it then, because it's Andrew, and we all love Andrew. How shall I say it? My views on Carousel are well known. I think it is a diabolical book. Mm. I think it has a diabolical set of lyrics. I find the characters appalling. I find the internal politics dreadful it goes round and round and round well and round. no but the, the, the whole domestic violence the the, the 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 violence against women by billy bigelow it's simply appalling the only saving grace in all of carousel in my view is the score uh, Richard Rogers, I'm not going to say he saves the day. He's able to. He's, he's more like a mortician. He's able to put very nice makeup on an appalling corpse. That's my view of the show. I have no doubt that. But it's a very popular show, and I have no doubt that it's been done to perfection mm. at the Arcola. I do give Rogers and Hammerstein a hard time. 
Um, and that's not always fair. I think the score to Allegro is fantastic. I think the score to I think the score to Cinderella is uh, fantastic. But I do not think that Carousel is a show that I like at all. I'd just love to know what Andrew's done with it. Thank you. I want to um, talk about um, Stephen Ward. Ah. Which for me was the low light of the year. Oh, was it really? Yeah. The worst thing you saw? Yes. Oh, you see, this is the thing that's absolutely reinvigorated my interest in Andrew Lloyd Webber. So you and I are utterly coming from totally different positions. Really, what was so bad about it for you? It just wasn't a a, a story in which I was interested in. And I think if it was done 20 years ago with Tim Rice as a lyricist, it would have been probably a better piece of... I think it's absolutely out of its time. I think it's reflecting an audience which is gone. Mm -hmm. I agree with you there, absolutely. But... um, well, let me just give you the flip side. I thought it felt to me, as I think I've said before, what it didn't feel like was modern Andrew Lloyd Webber, which I'm less impressed by, or speaks to me less. It felt very much more like 1970s classic um, Andrew Lloyd Webber in terms of the um, the melodies. I wouldn't say grade A 1970s. I no. would say grade B 1970s. But I thought it was, <laughs> this sounds so patronising, a return to form by the master. Um, I really liked the score. I thought one or two of the lyrics were a little bit um, cumbersome. Um, Don I, Black's a good lyricist, though. I, I found the lyrics less impressive than the music. Uh, I found the story very engaging. I liked the heightened sense of performance that was done by it. And overall, I really liked the fact, and this is one of the things that you probably wouldn't have liked, that I'm not going to say cheap, but it looked modest. Yes. And it was um, it wasn't an overblown production. It was not an overblown production, but I thought that summed up the sixties, early the early sixties, very nicely. And I quite like some of the symbolism of it. I don't think everyone picked up, but there was a, a circular curtain in the nightclub, uh, which was all about s- circles and connections and networking and circles within circles. And of course, it was all about the um, social circles. Yeah, it was about social circles and who was in and who was out. The I mean, it was all that, absolutely about that. The problem with that it was a black curtain, so you couldn't see the projections that yeah. well. Yeah, I, I except there was. Yeah, some weaknesses, but I was very impressed. I'm sure it'll be done in ten years' time at the Menier Chocolate Factory, and it'll be held as the best production ever of it. Yes, the second. Yes, <laughs> I want to talk also about From Here to Eternity. Oh, right. Which th- these shows are kind of blocked, married. Th- yeah, yeah, because they died at the same time. Yes, and they're of you know, Tim, one is Tim Rice's show, and the other one is Andrew Lloyd Webber's yeah. show. And they came and they went within weeks of each other. Yeah. So, what did you think from Here of Eternity? What did you think of From Here to Eternity? <laughs> I. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a bit overly directed. I thought there's. It, my first question is, have you seen it? Yes. Okay. Um, I bet we're going to have exactly the different views on it again. <laughs> I thought it was. Um, there was a bit too much going on at the stage. I enjoyed the military choreography. I don't think we see enough of that in the theatre because I think the whole army is very theatrical in in many yeah, ways. Yeah, and it's all low all over the uh, London scene this year. Yeah. it's not just that we've um, Miss Saigon's back and yes. uh, and of course um, dogfight. So you know if you mm-hmm. if you wanted to see some American armed forces on stage, this was the year for it. And even Maiden Dagenham, there's a bit of that as well. But is there now? Yes, um, I I thought some of the lyrics were very nice, and again, it's nice to see Tim Rice back in his kind of doing lyrics which I think was you know yeah. quite nice for the show the music was okay it was a bit too ballad heavy for my liking um, and I struggled because there were almost too many leading characters to root for and I love the, the little guy who came on and narrated the piece but I didn't go again and I always say that's the Sign, st- stigma yeah. for if I really really was gripped by something you're I'm, I'm going to just give you the polar opposite on that because mm. I went to see Stephen Ward, loved it. Yep. I went to see From Here to Eternity and hated it. I agree with you. I think Tim Rice's lyrics were quite the best thing in it. I wasn't much taken by the score. I was utterly not taken by the book and the story. I detested nearly all the characters. No, um, very Eve, Eve, no even uh, uh, I think his name was DiMaggio or whatever. The um, the Italian fellow who gets murdered. The little one who comes on. Uh, well, yes, uh, was he the? Well, there was. He wasn't the the fighter. But they all end up killed and oh, and the death of the speech. Spoilers. <laughs> it's been in the public domain for a while. The book, at least. Um, yeah, I didn't like the. I didn't like the sexuality politics. I didn't like the um, uh, the characterizations. I um, yeah. and the slow motion bullet through the heart scene at the end. Oh. Felt like oh, you dear. wish you were there. <laughs> well, I wish I was the one holding the gun. No, not for me. I'm afraid. 
the one show that Thos and I might agree on, though, I know what this is going to be, was a, a sad loss in the uh, West, West End. End. Is um, I can't sing. I can't sing. I agree, and we've we've discussed this before. I think of the three almost at the same time. Yes. Because what the West End had this year, and I, I was I've been thinking about what did 2014 offer us? Well, at the flops. Big, yes, it did, and expensive flops. Yes. All three of those are high profile shows. I mean, we said um, Stephen Ward was quite modest, but actually you know they're all three west end shows by big people um the one that was most successful was i can't sing it had the shortest run they all died within weeks and months of each other the beginning of the year was awful for the west end it was carnage but i can't sing i can tell you now with my hands on my heart funnier show of the year mm -hmm. i think the most tuneful show of the year i can still i mean i've seen it four times I can still hum most of the songs yeah. from that show. And it actually contains one of my all-time favourite songs of the year, which is the song that the um, the young man hero... Um, it's the song I wrote myself. Mm -hmm. It's called that. Um, and it's just him and a ukulele. Um, and, but, you know, it's genuinely touching. Do you say that again, Phil? Ukulele. Um, the chap who played... I believe that's the traditional pronunciation in Hawaii. Um, the chap who played him... Because it's not a show about emotion... But, not in any real sense, not real emotion, but... Um, but every show he, needs a point where... He does, and he did that bit. There was just a little... What he did, he actor sang it, he, there was a little crack in his voice, mm. and it just said broken heart Because he to can't me. sing, you know. <laughs> well, I, I liked it. I thought everyone in it was... I, it was just marvellous. I'd see... Mm. If they, I'd love to see it again. I'd love to see a video of it. I, great show. Why isn't there an audio recording? It's such there a pity. Of, there's a recording of a couple of the songs which I can send you if you want to do, if you want to hear them again. Uh, Please, yes. Simon, I think I Can't Sing is one of the There songs. are indeed. There's a few uh, all over the internet. And, of course, I believe there was a, a, a CD with four songs that came free with the Evening Standard when it was being mm. launched, including a cut song. Uh, mm, indeed, but I Can't Sing, about, fantastic. About fracking, wasn't it? <laughs> that I couldn't tell you. Great, great show. I Can't Fracking Sing. I just want to finish by saying, Shanice! Lovely. Um... I want to talk about Miss Saigon. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> um, Press your button and get on with it. <laughs> uh, have you seen it? Thoughts? No, ever. No, not interested. Once again, it falls into exactly into the category of musical I don't much like. The enormous bloated London musicals, which had mm. their day twenty years ago. So, right, you saw it. What yes. did you think? And why has it come back? Two minutes go. <laughs> um, it's not as big as I would have liked it to have been, but you know, every man suffers that yeah. problem. Um, I feel. Yeah, they don't often have 2,000 people watching, though, do they? <laughs> I feel that it's certainly an epic piece. I was a bit bored, to be honest with you. That's what a lot of people are saying. Yeah. I think Did you it, see it the first time round? No, I've no. never seen it until that night at the Prince Edward Theatre where dear Andrew Edwards and I went to see it. Ah, oh, jolly good. And it's the run of the Andrews this evening. Exactly. The Andrew sisters. <laughs> it wasn't as big as I would have liked, as I've said. Yeah. Um, I think uh, this was summed up in an, in a recent episode where the two young chaps that we've recently um, enrolled said, uh, Aiton and Lewis. Yes. Um, if you're paying seventy pounds a ticket, don't have people push the sets on themselves. That's what stood out at me at that show. This is essentially a touring show plonked mm. into the West End. Ah, oh, and it felt like that to you? Yes. That's um, very interesting. And the story... Oh, yeah, we get it. You're in love. Move the plot forward. You don't need to sing another love song whilst intimately kissing each other to, you yeah. know, to death. Um, well, it is Madame Butterfly, isn't it? I yes. Mean, yeah, so it's showing its... Is it showing its operatic roots? Absolutely. That's what Boomer mm. and Schoenberg do. They take yeah. European grand opera and... Boil it down. Yeah. To a sludge. <laughs> what um, does stick out, though, was the chap playing the engineer, who was absolutely a phenomenal performer. And yeah. his stuff is comic, and which is, my God, that show needs comedy. <laughs> um, you, you, you almost want the whole show to be about him. As oh, really? To, yes. So it was a spin-off, then? <laughs> Mr. Saigon. <laughs> <laughs> you missed a moment there. Come back, Mr. Saigon. Yes. <laughs> Um, but if you can snag a ticket, Thos, and you have yeah. three hours to spare, don't go and see Miss Saigon. Yes, it's a pity. It just doesn't feel like it ought to mm. have come back. I want to talk about Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Jolly good. Again, Thos, have you, have you any no, interest in it? No, or? that's the second show I want to see next year. Right. Um, I'm quick. Oh, is that going as well? Your gypsy's replacing it. So. All right. You see, the thing is, 
Um, though that show and Made in Dagenham are the, what I sounds dreadful in my head. I rate them B or C grade. Mm -hmm. They're not absolute tip top shows. I'm sure they've got a lot to commend them, um, and I'm sure the people who do them are having a great deal of fun. But, but you, I wouldn't but, go and see them unless but I had. You were put off seeing Dirty Wadden Scoundrels because of Rufus Hound, weren't you? He's not someone I much admire. That's true. Um, but I'm not that keen on seeing the show. I mean, there's nothing about the show that would draw me in. But didn't I? I think I lend you the you did the cast recording right at the beginning of the round of musical talk in about 2006 or seven. You lent me the CD when one used CDs. Yes, yes. Um, and I yes, I remember you doing that, uh, and I listened to it, but I don't remember anything about it at mm. all. And that's one of the reasons why I grade it B or C. However, I do sort of want to see it now. It's run for a bit and possibly about to disappear. I. Was I was disappointed only because I, I saw it on Broadway with John Lithgow and and that was amazing. And, yes, I and can imagine. <laughs> it, it didn't match that, you know. Once again, a scaled down production put into the Savoy, reconceived not very well, um, and it was just very old fashioned and schlocky. Oh right, okay, that's interesting. Um, I enjoy the lyrics. I think they're very very witty, which is why I, yeah, the thing that would appeal to you. Um, and there's some very very funny moments in it but it's it's again it's what Broadway seems to be doing is making fun of itself it doesn't seem to be doing anything new it's no. just relying on old tropes fullbacks and tropes to get laughs you know talking to the audience and all going yeah. back to pantomime it's all very vaudevillian by the sound yes. of it yeah it's great um, which is pretty much what Aiton and Lewis said following their review yes you know there's a lot of hat dancing on the feet kind of thing but you yeah. know um, Robert Lindsay was okay, but he wasn't John Lithgow. I'll, no. I'll leave it at that. And, you know, that was a highlight for me. Um, oh, hello. Oh, we're getting good at this, aren't we, Thos? Yes. You pulled so, out just in time. <laughs> thank you, Harpist. It's all right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll we're on overtime. We'll, we'll take a break from this at the moment. But I, uh, I reached out to the listeners on Twitter and Facebook. And, and we're soundly rejected. <laughs> yes, and I got a couple of responses. Uh, the lovely Shannon Young on Twitter said the highlight of the year for her was the Billy Elliot cast change. <laughs> They're changing the cast at the um, Not At All Buckingham Palace Theatre. <laughs> The Victoria Palace. Yes. They seem to be closed down, Victoria oh, Palace. Oh, no, is it? Well, they're redoing it, aren't they? And oh, refurbing. And Cameron McIntosh has bought it. Oh, right, OK. Um, so, essentially, he said... Uh, well, uh, essentially, Shannon on Twitter said, a lot of the ex-ballet girls and parents were in that night, which, you know, must be mm. very moving to be part yes. of that moment. A heightened emotional Especially sense. with kids were around. And this was the ninth anniversary of the show. So, you know, it's getting yeah. on there. It's becoming a West End... Stalwart. It is, yeah. Stalwart? Stalwart? Yeah, yeah. Stalwart. Um, so a lot of people made the effort to be there. Everyone that came on stage got a huge applaud. And at the end of Electricity, Billy, played by Redmond Rance, who was leaving after several years, got such a long-standing ovation that he utterly broke character and was crying and smiling so much that he started to shake and the other actor had to basically just carry on playing the role. Oh, right. That sounds terrifying. It does. I mean... <laughs> You know, one can't criticise an actor of that age. That, no. That's uh, and shows like that are always slightly heightened. If you remember the public who just happened to have walked up that night, you might be slightly disappointed. Yes, it's like when shows do these muck up things on the last. Yes, you, know. I've, you can be self indulgent. Um, the however, can never be self indulgent. <laughs> Well, it shouldn't be so self-indulgent that it alienates the audience. Mm. It can be as self-indulgent as like as long as it brings the audience. It's in jokes for the cast yeah. or something like that. Yeah, and I've seen many a uh, performance ruin that way. But um, however, how very if you're you know if you know you're going to that performance and yes. you're interested in that kind of performance, I Nothing think that's fantastic. Beat. Yeah, I was going to say you must be riding on a, 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 a blanket tenth, of real energy. The tenth anniversary this year. Yes, of course, absolutely. Have you seen Billy Elliot? Yes, I've seen Billy Elliot several times. Do you I think, think it's one of the greatest British musicals? No, I don't. But I think it's certainly a very good British musical. One of the mm. greatest. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Days. Well, no, but not necessarily. But, you know, forgive me. Actually, how many songs does anyone in the public know? True. Not one. Um, but it is, however, a very good piece of theatre. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Souch on Facebook, I apologise if I have pronounced your name wrong, uh, said... No, no, Ryan is pronounced that way. Yep. Said uh, seeing Kerry Ellis return to Wicked was a highlight for him. Uh, what, through the stage door? Well, <laughs> she originated a role in the West End and then she has recently gone back to play oh, right, the okay. role of Elphaba. But as has uh, Katie Rowley-Jones has gone back to play the role of Nessa Rose. Is Wicked still a show you're yet to experience? Yes. Thoughts? Oh, well, it is live, yes. I think that should be an evening for us. Why? 
because I'd be interested to hear your response. I can give it now. <laughs> if you haven't seen it. I know the score. Okay. Not my cup of tea. Um, also, I mean, forgive me, this, this I was only musing recently, but, you mm. know, is Wicked now old hat? Do very young it's people... It's got an old hat in it. <laughs> very good. But here's my question. People are going back. The people who are going back to see it are people who have seen it before and people who want to re-see it again with the original yeah. cast. But are the new 14-year-old girls still coming in? I don't know. I'm not the person to ask, but it's certainly one we can put no. on to Twitter. Yeah, I, I, it's just a question. I, I'm simply wondering if it's all... In the same way that, you know, High School Musical has had its day, I know Wicked is still on, but is it starting to get a little bit... I think, I think the... Uh, I mean, Stephen Daudry is in line to direct the film for Wicked, so I think once that'll the revitalize film it, comes out, yeah. that'll, you know, bring it... It's been... Th- I do hope Piers Brosnan will be singing in it. It'll be, uh, I think... It's about 13 years it's been playing on Broadway, mm. which is a massive triumph for a show. Oh, I'm, I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to pretend for one second the no, show isn't a good show. I'm not going to pretend it's um, not a successful show. I'm not even going to pretend it's not a legendary show. It's clearly going to be one of those shows that's remembered. Mm. Is it a show that appeals to me? It is not. No. Eve Hookman just said Gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> And which, we know Eve. We which all love seems Eve. to be the theme of the year as regards. Um, yeah. I mean, I really want to see City of Angels, but you cannot get a ticket for that for Love No Money. So I, I love City of Angels. So I, I saw it the first time with the marvellous Roger Allen. I had Frazier, but he was playing the male part very well. The reviews. Stone or Stein? There are two. Oh, I think it's Stein. But, uh, I mean, we'll talk about it. I mean, the reviews have come out. They say it's almost, and I hate the fact that reviews say this, it's too clever for its own good. No, it's not. Moving on. Oh, can I just add my highlight of the year? Yes, then? please. And in a way... Edinburgh. Well, right, yeah, overall, Edinburgh, of course. And I should say that Alba was a fantastic show, which was my five-star show for Edinburgh. But if I was actually being asked what was the thing I most enjoyed in musical theatre in 2014... It would be something we've already spoken about. I can't sing. It's I can't sing. I'm so sad it has gone. I, and I'm so sad that there simply aren't any remnants of it. Mm. it, it I'm going to say it again. That is a film. That the spaceship sorry, that's, comes down in Cats <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> jolly good. Um, <laughs> For some I, reason. I think I can't sing would turn into a very jolly film. Um, I would love to see it as a film or even a television adaptation yes. on, on ITV. Um, it, it would just be. The score is, if nothing else, if nothing else, please, I want an album. Mm-hmm. But there we are. It's not going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pity. But if you saw it, you loved it. I did. We're I don't very know. lucky. We were. I know it really wasn't around for a great little time, and I saw it twice. Four times. Well done, you. Um, but um, seriously, that was my highlight of the year. I've just had a message from my friend in America. Just coming I- in, just coming in. <laughs> news. Beep, 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 beep. Who spent some time What's on... happened to Mr. Kennedy? <laughs> he spent oh, no. T- he spent some time on bro- uh, on Broadway, and he also lives in Florida, so he, he sees a lot of touring shows. Um, the highlights for him was seeing Matilda on Broadway, which has just announced it's recouped its $16 million investment, which is quite... Ooh, she's an expensive little girl, isn't I she? I know. Um, and the touring production of Phantom was his low light. Why? I is quote, that because the chandelier came down low? <laughs> I quote, the show is so tedious and the new set design blocked part of my view, even though he was paying the top ticket price of $100. That sounds a bit shabby. Um, I tell you what's interesting. Um, people will know that I'm not a fan of... Um, Phantom of the Opera, I came to see it in London only about five years ago now, which is well into its 400-year run. So, Before its time. Yeah, so I was not vastly delighted by it. I can see what people do like in it. It doesn't appeal to me at all, and I, I, I think it was a bit tired by the time I saw it. However, this very last weekend, I was visiting some non-theatrical friends uh, in Norfolk uh, who had, for a day out, decided to come to London, well, for a weekend, and they wanted to do something on the Saturday, so they went to see... Phantom of the Opera. Now, I must tell you... With uh, Martin Ball. (laughs) He and she are not theatrical-going types. They like the theatre when they go, but they go very, very rarely. And they certainly fall into the category he does of, I don't much like musical theatre because he's a uh, a middle-aged man. Um, You know, (laughs) ask most middle-aged men if they like musical theatre, they will say no. Um, However, he told me, and unbidden by me, how much they absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. So it still has the ability to speak to people... it just doesn't do it to me or this poor gentleman in America that you've been talking about. It, it's really interesting. I saw Cats and I felt to myself, it's 1993 all over again. Phantom, Les Mis, Miss Saigon and Cats yes. are all back. And I don't think they're going anywhere. 
and but that just says to me what a small back, back to what we've said so they're often tourist attractions they are but they're um uh, yes they're not aimed at the british audiences no. particularly uh certainly not the regular theater going see i think these shows should do different languages every night <laughs> so Thursday you have the Japanese production and Wednesday you have the uh, um, the French speaking production of Les Mis I think they should be on tour and they shouldn't be in London that's what I think I have no problem with being on tour I have no problem coming to London for limited runs but it's the sadness is that actually the braveness of even the theatre last year which gave us Stephen Ward which gave us From Here to Eternity which gave us um, I, I Can't Sing see. although that came to fruition in 2014 have all been utterly rebuffed. And you go back a few more years on top of that, we've got things, you know, poor old... And even Maiden Dagenham, you know, a, a, yeah. a very, in my opinion, good new British musical. Yes. Um, and only a few years ago, you know, Betty Blue Eyes, uh, not without its problems, but a lot of big, expensive musicals have come to London in the last few years and they seem to have flopped one after the well, other. The problem is... And it's such a shame. They all start in London. And that's yes. the mistake. Do you know, I think you might be right. The big shows nowadays haven't started in london yeah and i've long said this on the show they've started in a this is where we are so lucky in this country they started in a government funded arts institute whether it's the rsc for matilda or the national for warhorse or you know west yorkshire playhouse or yeah. the, the many a or something they've all started in places that aren't relying on making money they're there to make art first, first. and that's where Britain is the best in the world at doing that kind of stuff when it works yeah yeah absolutely. I couldn't agree more you make a very interesting point there of course you know Britain is actually a very small country so even when it's um, these things are being generated away from London we're all on the tour circuit somewhere we've just mm. been talking about it it's absolutely perfectly reasonable things should start in Scotland start in Wales start in Ireland start in the north start in the west for goodness sake and then come to London and then go everywhere else as well so I really like what you're saying there but how marvellous that we do actually have vibrant theatrical hubs away from London um, and which, the Edinburgh Fringe as well of course well of course yes we're very very lucky there um, so there's lots and lots of places where things can start and, uh, or develop and change it's being on the road first so I agree with you um I just think it's a great pity that we are in London. We're very lucky to be in London. We've got some of the best theatre in the world. But we've got some of the most pedestrian and conservative with a small C theatre as well, I regret. But people see what they want to see. If you don't want to see it, as you said, don't see it. Yeah, we I have, won't. We have the choice. Um, Thos, thank you very, very much. For, it's a pleasure. Where's the money? Uh, yep. Um, <laughs> it's in that envelope, isn't it? Yes, just just out there dangling outside the window. Um might you return with this format, Thos? I think it's quite funny, well, isn't it? I think there's something to be said for a, a review of, of... Well, not so much a review of a year, the review of one person's year. Yes. Yes, I think that's quite an interesting uh, take. If you hated my year and wish to review yes. it yourself, please do let me know on uh, 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 twitter.com slash musical talk, or if you didn't like Thos's comments, twitter.com slash musical talk Thos. It's been known, for yes. goodness sake. Um, to which the response is, you are an idiot, my lord. <laughs> granted uh, and uh, Thos and I will be with you very very soon uh, what have you got coming up next week Thos thanks for asking it's, you're it's... welcome <laughs> thanks for doing it um, it's going to be our new tradition uh, the tradition we started last year it's going to be a very simple quiz for our listeners wouldn't it be the tradition we started this year doesn't something need to become a second time for it to become a tradition? This is going to be the this is the second time. Yeah, so it's a tradition we're starting this year. Oh, I see. You're, you're saying it's the repetition that makes the tradition. There is something in, in that. My exposition. Yeah, that's very very good. Um, your lyrics. How are they doing? Governor. But uh, <laughs> um, but certainly it's certainly going to be what we did last year. There'll be a selection of some of the music you've heard on the show this year, which the authors have been kind enough to let us play. Uh, plus a very simple, very happy, very easy quiz for you to listen to in between us of music uh, which will see us out at the end of the year lovely and until then have a lovely week have a lovely Christmas Thos and all our dear listeners thank you very much for joining us for another year of Musical Talk and we'll see you in 2015 thanks very much Nick and yes we will see you we'll soon quarter past eight as they say in America is what you're doing with that turkey legal? Oh. yeah quite <laughs> 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 <laughs>